Good morning, Bird Brains, and welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Today, we're going to be reviewing episode 12, Why I Bought a Harley. Pretty good episode. We talk about the reasons why I bought a Harley, and uh, Brad has a little surprise for us at the end of the episode. So, let's get into it. I still hadn't uh, quite narrowed down my intro at this point. It's a gorgeous morning, headed to work on a Saturday. But I have an interesting topic for you guys today. Now we all know a good majority of motovloggers ride something like this. They still do. Or maybe this. They definitely still do. And we have a lot that ride something like this. Absolutely, yes, still do. I get asked a lot. Why? If you look at the uh, sticker on the dually to my left right there, there's a Harley sticker. <laughs> Why did I actually buy a Harley? And it came down to a few simple points. Number one, I've owned a lot of other bikes before, so Harley was just kind of one that I kind of wanted to venture into. I've owned dirt bikes. I've owned sport bikes. When I was looking to get back on two wheels after I sold my CBR 600, I was looking either between a Harley or a Supermoto. And there's a few reasons why I chose Harley over a Supermoto. The main- Looking back on this video and thinking I almost pulled the trigger on a Supermoto multiple times, I'm still very glad that I didn't because I'm still alive and in one piece. Let me rephrase that. You can't do what a Supermoto is built to do, AKA, like a mother with a person on the back. Now, if there's people that do, more power to you. I would love to see you popping wheelies down the interstate, going up and down stairways, going through parks, two up. I still haven't seen that. If you have anybody that uh, does that, please let me know. Harley over Supermoto is, I used to ride motocross, so when I get on a bike that light, I want to push it to its absolute limit. Which is part of the reason why I got rid of my CBR 600 in the first place. There was at one point that I passed a cop going 85 and a 35 on my CBR. And that was kind of my point where I was kind of saying to myself, you know what, it might be time to get rid of this. Oh, that was a scary moment. Seeing him just sitting there at the light, looking down, seeing 85, knowing he was going to turn around. <laughs> just uh, dropped a gear and disappeared. I by far could have gotten a better Harley for two up. This one's all right. Sportsters do okay. They do a lot better than I thought they would. But like I said in previous episodes, street glide or road glide or anything of that nature would have probably been a lot better. I originally wanted the V-Rod muscle, but if you're someone who knows anything about bikes and how much they cost, those things are expensive as fuck. It's funny that I brought this up now. Me and Brad actually just had a talk the other day that He's kind of sort of looking for a new bike, and he said he he really likes the V-Rods. And I told him I was actually in between the V-Rod and the Iron when I first started looking. The only reason I went with the Iron was because of the price. He didn't believe me, but I have the proof right here. I absolutely love it. I, I love it probably. There's very few bikes that I love the look and style of more than the Harley Sportster. I will, I will go on record saying that. I love- And that still holds true to this day. The only one I did like better was the Dyna, which is why I have a Dyna now. Routes you can go when, when looking at customizing them. I've got lots of plans for this bike, but I really don't want to get too crazy until Miss Bird gets her own bike because it's probably going to involve chopping off the rear fender or maybe going a hardtail, probably not. But just a lot of stuff that's going to make it less comfortable. Now that that's a- Or just, you know, not able to be ridden by a passenger at all. I'm not your stereotypical Harley rider. A lot of Harley riders I've met are complete douchebags. And not saying all of them are, but I'm saying a lot that I have met are assholes. We've all seen them on other videos telling people to get a real bike. Which I think Heck, they even tell me that now. Thing on two wheels is a real bike. That being said, I will ride with anything on two wheels. I Still holds true to this day. On a moped, if you're on a Grom, if you're on a Ruckus, if you're on a CBR 1000, if you're on a Jixxer 600, even if you're on a Ninja 300, I will ride with you. I, I will say that's one thing that I kind of dislike about how my group has kind of grown is that don't get me wrong, I don't mind that they're all Harley riders. It's just I wish the group was a little bit more diverse because I feel like we just put off that whole Harley stereotype with the big group and 
the loud stereos <coughs> roadblock. And um, yeah, I just feel like it's kind of off-putting to other riders. Riding with everybody. I think I might try to organize a group ride for the few San Antonio motor vloggers that we have. I might actually take the lead on that. But I know in San Antonio, it's a very packed riding schedule, so I might have to get with some people. At this time, I actually had never done a group ride before, so it's funny that I wanted to start off with the moto vloggers, and I ended up actually doing that. And now I have a group ride like once or twice a month. It's officially the weekend for me. I'm excited. I hate working Saturdays. It feels like your weekend is non-existent because you just got like half a day Saturday, Sunday, and then boom, you're back at work. But I'm actually excited to go home today because today we've got friends over for pasta night. Now pasta night isn't actually a thing, but friends overnight is a thing. We do it probably once a month where we invite all of our friends over and have a big old meal and drinks and just a good old time. You don't have to go out and spend a ton of money with friends to have a good time. If you don't do it often, you should try it. Just invite literally everyone on your, on your friends page or friends list and just see who shows up. And those who show up are usually the ones that are closest to you, are your actual friends. It's funny, we still do this to this day, but it's mostly just the OG crew. I, it's funny how they have turned into some of my closest friends. New renovated backyard. Uh, we did a little bit of uh, updates and stuff after the hailstorm. We got a little cash money from the uh, previous owner's insurance. So we were able to uh, get some updates done out there. Yeah, that's a nice little setup. Doesn't seem very nice. Anyways, uh, I'm sure he was thinking the same thing about me. Canopy, we got a brand new top for it, so it doesn't look like Swiss cheese no more. New cushions for the chairs. Two scorpion chairs. I call them scorpion chairs, they're actually called the dream chair. I'll get you some video though, because... AKA the chairs that if you get into, you're not being productive for the rest of the day. And everyone who I've told that to and has sat in it has agreed with me. These chairs are more comfortable than a hammock. You can get them on Amazon, they're not cheap, but you can get them on Amazon, trust me, you will be happy with your investment. Other than that, uh, we got, um, or I built a nice stone fire pit with a metal insert and a cage and everything. We might try that out tonight. It might be too hot. Uh, it's still like in the high 90s, so don't know if a fire is exactly what we want to do. And tiki torches. We got some badass tiki torches with some uh, mosquito repellent fluid in them. This was before tiki torches were looked upon as racist. You definitely need that because anytime there's any sort of a drizzle, it pretty much just is swarms of mosquitoes. And they are some big sewing bitches too. So I swear I saw one the other night that had a goddamn tail number on it. But yeah, we got some friends coming over and they're actually going to get to be the first people to see the Sanderson Adventure Vlog. I know you guys have probably already seen it because at this point it would already come out. I still do this even to this day, like when we have friends over, like whatever my latest uh, big video was, I preview it to some of the OGs. Like my most recent one was, I believe it was the Twisted Sisters ride. They hadn't seen it, so I invited some people over and we watched the Twisted Sisters ride. Uh, update on the seat. It has now been five weeks and four days. Yeah, five weeks and four days since I ordered that seat and it still has not yet even shipped. JP Cycles, I am done with you. This has confirmed it. Nail in the coffin. Not ordering from you ever again. I would highly recommend ordering from GetLower.com where you can get a free Get Lower t-shirt with any order over $100 using promo code Bikenberg. I was going to vlog me walking in and saying, hi friends, but I got met at the door. Man, that hair though. I was given an early birthday present by my best friend Brad. You this is actually the first time outside of the bonus videos where you actually get to meet Brad. Bachelor party video, he was there. So the first part of the surprise was is for my birthday, Justin gave me the cash with a note that said, learn to ride, fucker. So True. what he didn't know <laughs> I was doing was I took vacation this week and didn't tell anybody. Scheduled myself to take the riding class at Harley. Great place, by the way. Passed the class, got my license, got everything, got insured, got a bike. So the first part of his birthday surprise. Screw that bike. Coming up in a couple weeks was he now has a writing partner. 
The second part is, is on his birthday, or a weekend close to it, we're going to be taking a very long ride together. Ta-da! Ha! <laughs> Gay! You know I've got to give Brad a hard time. I pull up and this is just sitting in my driveway and it didn't really, it kind of threw me off because his car wasn't here and usually they take his car, but our other friend Jessica's car was here and I know she has a bike, but I didn't know what type of bike she has. And then I walk in and we're sitting there talking and what threw off, what threw it off, they were, they were going to tell me anyways, but what threw it off. It's the same key I had for my CBR. And I spotted it. I was like, wait a second. That says Honda. There's a Honda in my driveway. <laughs> so uh, officially the first person that I have influence to ride. Number one. And now I get fan mail every week saying that that was the reason why they bought a, a bike. Terrible influence. Hi, friends! <laughs> <laughs> Scaring Miss Bird is one of my favorite activities of all time. Also watching Brad do stuff in slow motion is probably up there as a close second. Guys, I met my first fan. What's your name, Blasco? Nice to meet you. So Terrible joke. The backyard. I wanted to get it before the sun went down. These are the scorpion chairs. Actually, these were built last time that you were over here. He was drunk and <laughs> trying to build these, which are not easy to build sober. I got pretty far. And it was like I reached the point. 190 degrees outside. But yeah, here's what they look like. Go Our backyard looks so much different now since we've gotten a third dog and it's become like their playground. It's completely destroyed. Here, let me, re let me release the Kraken. We tie them up so the wind doesn't knock them into each other and blow it down and shit. That actually makes a lot of difference. But yeah. Check it out. Super comfy. It's just straight chilling right there. Well, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to a lot more shenanigans now that my best friend has a bike. It's going to get good. So. And boy, did it, if I have to say so myself. See you guys next time. Well, guys, going to do it for today's episode of Throwback Thursday. As always, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.